If you've just bought a new Garmin watch, you're probably trying to find your way around the Garmin Connect app. Now, you might be asking yourself several questions such as, how can I connect my watch to the app? What's this body battery? What's intensity minutes? Dynamic steps cold? Changing heart rate zones? And so many overwhelming questions if you've never used this app before. But don't worry, I'm here to help you navigate all of these extensive settings and show you a few hidden features within the app that many Garmin users don't know about. In this Garmin Connect app tutorial for beginners. So we're going to split the Garmin Connect app into three different sections and each section has its own video. This video covers part one, which details notifications, user settings, device settings, and of course, I'll show you how to connect your watch for the very first time to the Garmin Connect app. Now there's also a hidden feature within the top section of the app, which I'll go through today, that many people don't know about. So make sure you keep watching and find out what that hidden feature is. Okay, let's get cracking with part one of this tutorial. So assuming you've charged up your watch and you're ready to go, the very first thing you need to do is download the Garmin Connect app from the Play Store or the App Store. And once that's done, it's time to create your account. Enter your details such as name, email address, password and country. And then on the next screen, select your watch or activity tracker. In my case, I'll pick the Garmin venue too. Next, the app will guide you to connect your device to the app. In my case, it asks to enter a six digit pin displayed on my watch right now. Okay, now the watch is connected to the app and you'll see this green tick mark at the bottom of the screen once that's done. Now set your profile picture. You can pick any avatar from Garmin's own gallery, which are pretty cool to be honest. Take a photo right now if you can, or better yet, upload one from your phone's gallery. Maybe a photo of you running, hiking or lifting weights. Whatever you like, trust me, just add a pic right now. The app's experience will feel a bit more personalized every time you open the app after your workouts. I'll go ahead and upload my own pic here right now. You'll then be asked a few questions around your health and fitness, which will help your watch and the app estimate key health metrics such as calories burned, BMI, steps, etc. Okay, press next. Select your gender. Enter your height, either in centimeter or feet and inches. Your current weight but don't worry if you haven't done a weigh-in recently. Just enter a rough estimate for now. Next, enter your date of birth. Okay, if your watch is equipped with sleep tracking, then it's best to enter an estimated bedtime and wake-up time right here. Again, this is just an estimate and I'll show you how to amend these later on within the Garmin Connect app. At the bottom, you have the option of selecting Do Not Disturb whilst you're sleeping if you have a watch that can display notifications. I personally don't like being disturbed when I'm sleeping, so I turn Do Not Disturb on. Next, pick the wrist on which you will wear your watch on. And the app has now set your first fitness goals based on the data you've entered. Okay, next, it's going to ask for a few permissions and really it's up to you if you'd like to go ahead and grant these permissions or not. I'd highly recommend going ahead and granting the app all of these permissions as it will help with smaller things like weather data being transmitted to your watch, phones and text messages coming up on your watch and really enable all of the smart features that you bought your smartwatch for. Okay, that's all the main settings out of the way that most Garmin watches will need. And your device should sync now for the very first time. And there you go, your device and app's initial settings are all done. Before you enter Garmin Connect, it will show you some basic features and interfaces of your respective watch. So for me, the app now shows the touch and button interfaces of Garmin Venue 2, all the different screens, so on and so forth. Now click finish and there you go, you'll finally be able to enter the Garmin Connect app. Now depending on your watch, you'll likely be greeted with this message to set some more things up, but I'd highly recommend skipping this step as it will start overwhelming you. Instead, follow the approach that I'm just about to show you to help set things up in a simpler and an easier way. The top section is where you'll find notifications, profile settings, your watch or tracker settings, and a sync button to synchronize your watch to the app. Notifications are self-explanatory. Any messages from Garmin or your connections or friends within the Garmin Connect app will appear here. So you can see other posts, like if you want to, as well as comment on those posts. Okay, with that out of the way, let's select the profile pic and this shows you activities and some badges that you might have won by completing certain challenges or milestones. Say you walked for 100 miles for the very first time with your watch. Now, 
At the start, you might see only two to three badges, but don't worry, this list will start growing as you wear your watch and perform more fitness activities as time passes by. Now, touching on any of these badges shows its name and what milestone or challenge earned you that badge. This is something that may keep you motivated towards achieving your health and fitness goals. Stats show overall statistics for common activities such as running and cycling over a 12 month period. It also shows your personal records such as the farthest distance you might have run or your best one mile time. It's a nice and easy way to get some quick stats or if you wanted to show off or compare it against with your friends. About shows your personal information that you set up initially. Now, if you wish to edit any of this and access some privacy features to restrict data you don't want other Garmin users to see, select Edit on the top right corner and it will open up a bunch of new settings for privacy. Here, you can also change your common activities if you started something new. Say, for example, you started triathlon training and this will be visible to the others on the app. You can see triathlon has been added here now after I change the setting. Okay. Let's move on to devices and device settings. Select the watch icon here and this will open up a list of your Garmin devices connected to this Garmin Connect app and the account. Selecting your watch will open some settings that can help you personalize its usage exactly to how you want it. But before you touch any of these settings that you see, I highly recommend scrolling down and first selecting the user settings. You'll know why we're doing this later when we get to the intensity minutes settings later on in this tutorial. Now you've reviewed the personal info and sleep settings already, so we'll skip that and go straight to heart rate zones. Now based on the date of birth you provided earlier in the setup, Garmin will automatically calculate your maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age in beats per minute. And it will use this maximum heart rate to split it into five different zones. So for me, 220 minus 32 is 188, which is my maximum heart rate when I'm training. Each zone is a range, so for me, zone 1 is a range from 94 to 113 beats per minute. You can manually adjust these heart rate zones by entering them in beats per minute or by entering a percentage of your maximum heart rate zone. Now, depending on your health and fitness conditions, you might want to tweak these settings, but if you don't have any specific health conditions or restrictions, I'd recommend leaving them as they are. You can also set different heart rate zones for running and cycling if you wish to. But again, I'd suggest leaving these off if you're not doing any dedicated training for a marathon or a long cycling session. Okay, with that out of the way, let's scroll all the way back up. Now, if your watch is capable of storing and streaming music, you'll first need to select set up Wi-Fi and then move on to the list of music apps available. If you can't see anything here, you will need to go to the Garmin Connect IQ app, which is a completely different app. And then you'll need to download the respective music service such as Spotify or Amazon Music or even Deezer. Okay, now let's move on to Garmin Pay. If you have one of the recent Garmin watches, you're likely to have Garmin Pay functionality to load credit and debit cards straight onto your watch. Once you select Add Card, you'll need to then set up a passcode, which you will enter on your watch every time you wish to use Garmin Pay. Next, you'll need to go through some of the agreements and then you can add your card details. Now, if you live in the United States, you're very likely to have a bank that supports Garmin Pay. But if you, like me, live in the UK, unfortunately, there's not many banks that support Garmin Pay, which is extremely frustrating. So if paying with your watch is important to you, I highly recommend checking the list of supported banks before you buy a Garmin watch. I'll place a link in the description box below so you can check that list out yourself. Next, if your watch supports smart functionalities, you'll likely find the text responses settings right here. For incoming calls, you can set up a maximum of three responses at a time. Whereas for text messages, there's a long list of options where you can even type in your own response that you can reply back to incoming text messages. Next, activities and apps is where you can either add or remove activities from your device. So for example, if you don't really ski and you select this minus sign on the left, the ski activity will go down on this list. Any activity with a plus sign here can be added to your device as well. Now, depending on your watch, there may be some additional activities available to install from Garmin's own store. So for example, if I picked up yoga this week and wanted to record it, I can then add it to my device just like this. You can even get more apps from the Garmin Connect IQ app. 
Now, data fields can be useful if you want to see a specific set of data during your activity. So for example, if you're running out and at a glance, you wanted to see only your pace, distance and heart rate, you can search for a data field exactly to show you those details. But if you're just starting out and have a new watch, I'd recommend skipping this step as the default data fields on your watch are pretty good to start with. Appearances can help you customize things like watch faces, glances and controls menu. Now for watch faces, you will again need to go to the Garmin Connect IQ app and there's a separate video for this if you wanted to learn more. Glances are summary data cards on your watch which you can either add, remove or even reorder on this page. So for example, if I wanted to see the weather at a glance on my watch, I can add weather by selecting this plus icon and it will be available on my watch when it syncs next to the app. Now the order of glances here is exactly what you'll see on your watch. So if you wanted to reorder any to see the highest priority data, this is where to, you can do it. Depending on the device you have, you may have a controls menu that you can customize. So with the venue 2, I can long press the top button on my watch which brings up the controls and these are essentially shortcuts to different features. So if I wanted to bring up the music controls quickly, all I have to do is go into controls, pick Spotify and that's it. I can add, remove and reorder all of my favorite features around this controls menu which I think is really really nice. Okay, we're still at the device settings here. Within sounds and alerts, you can set alarms on your watch. So for example, I'll set one for every weekday at 6.30 a.m. You can change settings for smart notifications, such as whether to show any notifications during activities or not, and pick the apps that you'd like to push notifications to your watch. At first, it will show all the apps available on your phone, but you can pick and choose all the necessary apps that you'd like to see notifications from on your watch such as calendar, WhatsApp, phones, messages, etc. With abnormal heart rate alert, you can choose to enable alerts on your watch if you have an unusually high or low heart rate. So for example, if your normal resting heart rate is between 55 and 60, but whilst resting, it shoots up to 100, your watch will start vibrating and can suggest some relaxation techniques to bring your heart rate back down. I'll leave this on at the default settings, but you can change this if you know that you have a higher or a lower resting heart rate. Activity tracking is where you can set up your watch's sensors. Pulse OX or Pulse Ox is where you can set the SpO2 or the blood oxygen saturation measurements, which is that red light flashing right at the back of your watch. Leaving it on the entire day will result in a major battery drain. So I'll normally leave it only on when I'm sleeping. Now move alerts are those annoying notifications where your watch will buzz if you've sat for too long. And this is where you can turn on or off those notifications. Move IQ settings enable automatic activity detection. So for example, if you start running without actually selecting it in your watch, this setting will ensure that your watch detects your run and registers it as an activity within the app. Now the auto activity start is to set a threshold for the time after which you want the activity to be recorded. Now the daily steps goal here is interesting as the app can dynamically adjust the goal based on how much you've been walking in the last few days. So if you've consistently been increasing your steps every day, the next day will be set with even a higher goal. If you start reducing your steps, the goal also reduces. You can turn this off if you want and set a fixed goal, say 10,000 steps per day, which is commonly followed by many people. But I find this whole dynamic goal setting really nice as it can help me increase or decrease my daily steps based on what I've been doing the last few days. Floor climbed is a fixed goal. I leave it on 10 as a default. Now intensity minutes is the number of minutes your heart rate has been in a specific zone when you've been training. 150 minutes is the recommended duration per week by many health organizations around the world, but you can increase or decrease this depending on your own health and fitness goals. Now the heart rate on your watch will count towards these intensity minutes and these can be set by first selecting the moderate intensity level. For example, I want to set my heart rate zone 3, which you saw earlier in the video, as my moderate intensity level, where every one minute spent in zone 3 counts towards my weekly 150 minutes. Vigorous intensity level should always be higher than the moderate intensity level. So for me, I'll pick zone 4 as my vigorous intensity level, where every one minute spent in heart rate zone 4 will contribute 2 minutes towards my 150 minute weekly intensity minutes goal. 
Now we've already covered user settings, so we'll skip that and we'll move straight to general. The main settings here are your watch's heart rate sensor, which you can turn off to increase battery life if you wanted to, but I'd highly recommend leaving it on all the time. Deleting apps from your watch if you're running low on storage and setting the frequency of data recording from the sensor. I leave this as smart recording such that the watch will increase the frequency of recording to every one second when I'm exercising. And when I'm not in an activity, it will lower the frequency and let the watch do its thing. Okay, so here's a secret feature that many Garmin users don't know about. If you've lost your watch in your house or in your gym bag, a trick here is to select find my device and your watch will start vibrating so it's easy to locate it. And that's all the features within the Garmin Connect app that you need to know about in part one of this tutorial. Now, if you've enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, subscribe to this channel will be much appreciated. And if you'd like to continue to part two of this tutorial, make sure you click on the pop-up banner or on the video cast that I'm displaying right now. See you in the next one.